Oh, Lord, we thank you for your blessing and your love, your mercy, your kindness, God. Extend it towards us, your people. As we come to celebrate the homegoing celebration of Walter, oh God, we thank you that you, Father God, God, are now resting in the bosom of your presence, God, for eternity. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that now he's walking in his glorified body, God. Father, all the things he dealt with in his life, he no longer have to, Father, be entangled with those things anymore, God, because of the goodness of God. Because you loved him unconditionally, God, to draw him to your yourself a long time ago, God. You put your spirit in him, God, and he walked as a vessel of love, demonstrating who God is. And we thank you, God. Now, Father, anoint this word that I speak that will touch our hearts, change lives, empower us to live a more freer and a fruitful life in the kingdom of God. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The main stand read the scripture. Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepare the table for me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the day of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You may be seated. Amen. I thank God for my fiance, our minister Lashonda, uh, bringing me here as well. Could you get it without you, dear? Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Good to see my auntie again, I and May, and all of you. It's, it's such a blessing. But you know one thing? I was thinking about something this week, and the Lord began to show me in a vision about how the people of God come together. And when we come together, he showed me this celebration. And I'm like, God, what is it? He said, when the people of God finally leave this life to dwell in the presence of the Lord forever, it's a great celebration. Amen. 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 I want to talk about today, briefly for a moment, the Lord is my shepherd. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. And many of us have learned this scripture even as a child. And it's stuck in our hearts throughout years and ages to remind us of the goodness of God, that God is a shepherd. Yeah. Not only is a shepherd, he's the shepherd. Yeah. Not just the shepherd, the good shepherd. Yeah. The chief shepherd. Yeah. And because he chose himself to dwell in our midst, in our lives, guess what he did? He said, I'm going to be your shepherd. Yeah. Yeah. So when you go through different challenges in life, the word talks about the Lord is my shepherd I shall not lack anything. That's good news. So in other words, God being Jehovah Jireh, being El Shaddai, the God who's more than enough, he says, my children, my sheep, they're not going to lack nothing. And that's great news to know that if I have a need, we, like Pastor Carlton just said, we all have special needs. Everybody's need is not the same. Yeah. Somebody needs peace. Yeah. Somebody needs love. Yeah. Somebody needs compassion. Somebody needs joy. Somebody needs kindness. Yeah. Somebody needs temperance. Somebody needs self-control. Somebody needs to be released from anger. God says we all have a need, but in the process, I will supply your need. Yeah. 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 Then he goes and says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about David who wrote this psalm, was a shepherd boy. If you study life in the Bible, the Old Testament, you have some seasoned shepherds, but then a lot of times they left the young boys in charge of the sheep because they weren't skilled enough to go out to do any other thing in the field, so they left them tending to the sheep. And as they were tending to the sheep, God began to show me that they were irresponsible. They were responsible to carry a rod and to carry a staff. Check this out. The rod was a simulation of a walking stick, yeah. right? People carry canes, right? What is for? To help you walk. Mm -hmm. He says, thy rod and thy staff, they what? Comfort me. So the rod, many of the rods had nails in it or some type of sharp 
instrument in it so that the wolves came and, and the wild animals who came, the cougars, the whatever beasts would come to attack the sheep, they could defend themselves. But the staff was so unique because the staff was something as the sheep are wandering in the pastures. It says, he leads me beside still waters, right? So the still water, and one thing about this, if the water was a rushing, raging water, the sheep couldn't drink. The sheep feared raging waters. But if the waters were calm and peaceful, the sheep can come to the water and drink, right? The same way it's in our life today. When we're faced with different challenges in our lives, God says, even in the storm of life, I still lead you beside still waters. So when I have a desire to tell God, God, this is going on in my life. This trouble is raging in my life. This person doing this to me. These things are happening in my life. God says, guess what? I'm still going to lead you by peaceful waters. Yeah. That's a secret place where I can come and rest in the presence of the Lord. Uh -huh. But then he goes on and says, he leadeth me when he said restores my soul. Check this out. Many times we get tired, we get frustrated, we get disappointed, we get weary. Why? Because the things happen in our life. Life is going to have some events. Life is going to have some unforeseen events. Life's going to have some turmoil and some troubles and some trials. But one thing about it, it makes you weary. Why? Because it drains your strength. The enemy knows if I can distract you by the things that I cause to happen in your life, I can take away your peace. I can get you in a place of frustration. I can make you bitter. I can make you angry. But God says, I will restore. Refresh your soul. Replenish your soul. So just like when you get thirsty, what you need? Get some water, right? If you get thirsty and then about it, what benefit is going to do? You're going to be a, a thirsty soul. But when I get thirsty, I can go to the refrigerator or go to a fountain, get me a drink, right? Just like the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman who met Jesus on his, on his journey. He came to this woman. He said, give me a drink. Give me a drink. So he came to this woman. I'm, I'm going to tie this in together. I'm make it quick, too. He, he said, give me a drink. She said, me being a Samaritan, you being a Jew, you know we have no deal with each other. Because in your eyes, we're considered dogs. Yeah. We're outcasts. But Jesus said, if you knew who it was, yeah. they asked you for a drink of water. You would give him water. He would give you everlasting water. Yeah. So God says, I will restore your soul. Then he said, he leadeth me. See, a lot of times when God is trying to lead us away from dangers and trials and different attacks, even set up from the enemy, the enemy baits God's sheep, right? Mm -hmm. He set something that looks the, the pleasurable to the eyes so it can draw you out of the pathway God has for you. Mm -hmm. So what he does, he sets something that looks a delicacy for you. And he wants to attract your attention. Oh, let's, let's get off the track because over here the wolves are waiting for you. You don't know the wolves waiting for you. But the devil knows I got wolves over here waiting for you. So I can lure you toward the wolves where can devour you. We do that with our flesh. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. It's the bait of Satan that lures you off the pathway. It leads you from the path of righteousness to the pathway of wickedness. Then he said, for his name's sake. It ain't about you. It ain't about me. It's all about him getting the glory. God said, everything that happens in your life, it does to promote glory in my life. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, I love the scripture, it says when he comes in like a flood, God will raise up a standard to him of protection and covering and save heaven for you to shield you from your enemy. And then he goes on. Yeah, though I walk. That means you can't be sitting down in this thing. You got to be in motion. You got to be moving. So yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death. He didn't say through death. He said a shadow. What's a shadow? A reflection of an image of something that's moving. God says, 
when you walk through the things that look like it's killing your purpose. When you walk through the tribe of life that look like it's killing your destiny. And stopping your track from getting to the plan God has for you. God said, when you walk through the valley of shadows of death, he said, thou will not fear no evil. Which indication you're going to be tested with some evil things in your life. But when the evil comes, God said, you're not going to fear evil things. Like people fear going out in the dark. People fear being, being alone. People fear doing this. I fear doing that. I fear driving to Howard. Because I go to Howard, I might have an accident. I fear so many different things. But God said, thou shall not fear. Amen. Glory to God. He said, thou art with me. Thou rod. It's for my correction, my staff, for my leadership. So he says, I'm going to comfort you. Why? Because I got to have the staff. Because when you drift off pathway, I got to be able to grab you and pull you back. You might fall into a pit. So many folk in the house of God doing this scene in the last few years fell into the pit of despair. They forgot about the shepherd. They forgot about the staff. They forgot about the rod. God says, sometimes I have to take the rod to correct you when you get out of order. Mm -hmm. But my staff is there to let you know that no matter where you go, I'm still there for you to comfort you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still there for you to guide you. I'm still there for you to lead you. I'm still there for you to provide for you. I feed my sheep with the nourishment that they need because I'm there to comfort them. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. To thou prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. We all got enemies. Yeah. You got some secret enemies. Yeah. You got some enemies exposed. Yeah. You got some enemies plotting yeah. and planning. Yeah. But he says, you know what? I'm just a good God. So, so powerful. I know everything about you. I got a strategy just for you. So when your enemy think they got the upper hand, he said, I'm going to call you to sit down and rest in my presence. So I'll prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. Everything you need is at my table. So if you need to defend yourself, I got it at my table. You need some more love, I got it at my table. You need some more strength when you're getting weak, I got it at my table. He said, everything you need, I'll prepare a table before you pray to the enemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glory to God. He said, Thou anointed my head with oil. I love that anointing. Without the anointing, there's no power. But God said, Every born again believer has an anointing. You want to know how? You got Jesus. Jesus is the anointed one. When you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, Guess what he does? The anointing comes inside of you. The anointing empowers you. The anointing gives you the encouragement. Keep on moving when you're about to give up. When you feel like throwing in the towel, you say, everybody blame me for this or for blame me for that. God said, I got anointing just for you. So I will anoint your head the same anointing as in Jesus. To go right down to your garment. Go right down to your feet. The same anointing going to heal and deliver you. Doesn't matter what you're going through in this life. I got an anointing that will cover you. Glory to God. But then he didn't stop there. He said, Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runs over. I love this part. Because when my cup gets filled, God said, You got to go share that same anointing with your neighbors and your community. Go share it with your family. Go share it with your children. Share it on your job. Share it when you travel. So that same anointing. Take the anointing as the cup runs over. Anyone come and cut down with you, they gonna feel the presence of God. The same power that's working on the inside of you is gonna manifest on the outside. The same power that raised Christ from the dead. And the same power when I'm on my bed of affliction. The same power when trouble and trials come. The same power. Glory to God. It's working on the inside. It's manifested on the outside. What you can tell us today that he got that power in the presence of Jesus. Glory to God. But then he says, surely 